As a quick recap from the Loads and Processes series, we introduced the concept of a load and how that pertains to HVAC. We looked at things like the psych chart and how sensible and latent loads were plotted on that psych chart. Then we looked at processes, which was really just loads between two different states that were on some different saturated system representation, such as a psych chart, steam diagram, or in a refrigerant system. So now we're going to focus more on HVAC equipment. As we do that, just keep in mind that when we look at things like a coil, we are still talking about a process across that coil, and we could use one of these charts to look at it. So we're going to connect some of the principles we learned in the loads and processes, now looking at the equipment that manages those loads. And we're going to do it, at least at first, using terms like heat loops to try to simplify some of these complex systems. So as an example, if we look at something like the zone in the bottom right with a single coil, managing that load. That's one example of a heat loop. A second heat loop would then be if you put a chill water system connected to that chill water coil. Inside the chiller there's its own loop. We're going to get into vapor compression systems and what those look like under the hood. But there's then a separate loop that kicks it out from that internal refrigerant loop to the outside air if it's an air-cooled chiller. If it's a water-cooled chiller that's introducing yet another loop that kicks it out to the cooling tower through condenser water and then out to ambient air through an evaporative cooling process. But as complicated as we get with load management equipment, we're still talking about adding work to move heat from some source inside a zone to some sink, such as the ambient air in this case. And the way that that's done is with individual heat exchange between the heat loops. So we're going to look at heat exchanger equipment that actually manages that handoff. So they come in really two basic flavors. We can talk about direct or we can talk about indirect. When we look at direct, we are looking at a conservation of mass equation. So this is where one of those simplifications comes into play and we can look at an enthalpy balance between what's going in and what's coming out. With indirect, we're looking at things like a coil with water in it and air blowing across it, where they're not touching, but they're still having heat exchange because of the temperature difference. So there's going to be a few equations that we went over last time that will apply. And just to introduce a few more flavors, we can have different types of media associated with that heat exchange. So in an air-to-air -air direct heat exchange, that could be something like an economizer, where you're mixing return air with outside air and providing a, a mixed air going to a coil or going to your space. In a direct air to liquid heat exchange, that could be something like a cooling tower, where water is being dropped in some fill material and air is being either blown across it or drawn up through it to then get evaporated into the air. Something like a mixing valve is an easy to understand example of a direct liquid to liquid heat exchanger. And when we get into indirect heat exchangers, we can imagine a heat wheel that might be sitting at the inlet of an air handler so that as you have exhaust air blowing across and outside air coming in from the other side, we have a heat exchanger between those two without any direct contact. Air to liquid would be something like a water coil or a DX coil. Liquid to liquid heat exchangers come in a variety of forms such as plate and frame or shell and tube heat exchangers. So thinking about these heat loops is going to help frame our discussion as we get into looking at these HVAC equipment. So we're going to show schematics like this. We're going to try to connect that to individual pieces of heat exchangers and then talk about different load management equipment having those heat exchangers built in and be integral to the equipment driving the processes. So next we're going to go a little bit more into refrigerant and the vapor compression cycle starting our look at air conditioning equipment.